Hello! I mentioned on YouTube community, Instagram stories and twitter.com uh, that I had an idea. It, it was an idea given to me by my sister Evelina about making videos about Swedish true crime. I had like a vote, vote yes or no, um, on YouTube, community, Instagram stories and Twitter and the majority said yes. If the majority had said no, then I wouldn't make this video. But the majority said yes, so we are a democracy. <laughs> My sister Evelina gave me this idea of making videos about Swedish true crime, since my channel kind of is Sweden-inspired. Um, both me and my sister are really interested in true crime and I really enjoy listening to uh, a podcast called Mord 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 which is a Swedish podcast crime no murder against murder which is two friends who each week sit down and have a crime that they tell each other about which is really interesting um I also really enjoy Bella Fiori's Mystery Mondays videos. They're still called Mystery Mondays, but they're not necessarily posted on a Monday and they are not necessarily a mystery. But that's how it started. And I really enjoy those videos. She does them so well. We'll see after this video how both you guys and how I feel about these kind of videos. Maybe they're all right and I'll continue or maybe not. So today I wanted to talk about a Swedish case which normally goes by the name Flickmördaren i Stockholm which is um, the girl killer in Stockholm. Just after 4.30pm on the 2nd of September 1963 at Blommensvägen 138, four-year-old Jörgen runs up to his mother to tell her that a nasty man has taken his four-year-old friend Ann-Kristin Svensson. The mother rushes down to the sandbox where the friends have been sat playing to find no trace of the girl. She continues down a road and 25 meters from the sandbox she finds Ann-Kristin. She's unconscious and bleeding from her head. Jürgen and another friend had been sat in the sandbox when a man approached them and offered Ann-Kristin sweets. She didn't want any at first, but after he had persuaded her, she had some. The sweets contained Nembutal, which is a sedative to help you sleep. He then pulls Ann-Kristin into the woods before the pills have started to work. The boys run home to their parents, scared. In the bushes, the man rapes Ann-Kristin, but it's not working for him and her crying makes him angry. So he hits her head against a rock until she's no longer crying. Afterwards he leaves and it has now gone eight minutes since he approached them in the sandbox. A couple of weeks prior to this terrible, terrible crime, on the 12th of August, uh, at si just after 6 o'clock p.m. at Tengdalsparken, a woman named Kerstin Blomqvist was stood by her window, open window, and looked down towards the playground. There she saw a man holding the hand of a little girl in a yellow top. Shashtin could faintly hear what they were saying and it looked like the girl was trying to pull herself away from the man as he was trying to bring her with him. Shashtin could then hear the girl saying, I want to go home. Shashtin rushes to the telephone and calls the police, but when she looks out of her window, she can no longer see the man and the girl, but she can hear the girl shouting, let me go, I want to go home. But the police tell Shashtin to stay indoors until the police arrive. At 6.25 p.m. the police arrive and they pick up Shashtin and they drive around the streets um, around Tengdalsparken, but the man or the girl are nowhere to be seen. Shashtin was sent home with the calming words from the police telling her that she was probably misunderstanding the whole situation. What the police didn't do was go look in Vitabergsparken, which is a big park. At 7.30pm, a pensioner, Erik Malmgren, finds a lifeless girl laying behind some swings in Vitabergsparken so the big park. She's laying on her stomach and her yellow top is no longer yellow due to all the blood that is covering it. Further along is a pair of children's shoes neatly placed 
and the cover of the best-selling book Mördaren kommer snart, The Murderer is Coming Soon, by Anders Johansson. The girl is Berit Glesing, six years old, and she had been outside playing whilst her mum had done the dishes. No one had seemed to notice anything. After finding Berit, the police start a massive search to find the killer. There are also many headlines in all of the newspapers and the public are of course disgusted and angry um, that such a young girl has been sexually abused and murdered. The police get loads of leads from the public and over 200 people get questioned. One of the 200 people who get questioned is Ingvar Lövgren. He was reported by the manager of the elderly home where he was living that he was acting strange on the night of Berit's murder and that he had come home with a sprained wrist. Ingvar is however let go due to the lack of evidence against him. Now, Ingvar was 33 years old at the time but he was living at an elderly home due to his paternal grandmother being his only friend and the manager gave him a flat even though it was against the rules because he was staying on his grandmother's sofa. Ingvar started drinking heavily and exposing himself to women and for this he enrolled in different mental hospitals between 1953 and 1961. He was described as a person with a mild intellectual disability. He had no job and his living was covered by early retirement and housing support. So the girl that I mentioned first, Anne Kristen, once she was found, she was rushed to hospital, but her life couldn't be saved. She died at 3 a.m. on Tuesday the 3rd of September. On the day of the 3rd of September, the police knock on Ingvar's door. He was spotted by a couple on the day of Anne Kristen's murder coming out of the forest. The couple thought he was walking weird and his trousers were not buttoned. Ingvar is arrested and breaks down crying but he doesn't confess until a couple of hours later. He wasn't crying out of guilt or remorse. He was crying because he was going to miss his grandmother's 90th birthday. He also then admits the murder of 26 year old Agneta Nyholm and 62 year old Greta Lövgren. Agneta was murdered on the night of the 27th of June 1958, so five years before the murder of the two young girls, in the cellar of her flat building in Fruengen. Greta was raped and murdered in November 1962 in her home on Kungsholmen. Ingvar Lövgren was charged with three murders to forensic mental care at Salberga. 71 years old, Ingvar died on the 9th of February 2002 of cancer. At the time of his death, he was discharged due to his poor state of health. So that was everything for that case the girl killer case from 1963. I will link all the sources that I have used in the description box. Leave a comment of your thoughts about this case if you have any and also if you have any cases, Swedish cases, that you want me to cover leave a comment down below and I will see what I can do. Thank you so much for watching this video, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and aside from that, I will see you in my next video. Take care and stay safe. Hey, doll.